Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Andrew and in this video, we're gonna rebuild, upgrade and mod my secondary computer. And this is my secondary computer. A long story short, about eight months ago, I borrowed this computer and when I got it back, I got a little surprise. The computer is no longer working and everything was covered with dust and some reddish sticky dirt. And on top of that, in the bottom part of the case, Around the power supply, I can feel a very light smell of mold or moisture. The cooling fan is tilt and out of place, but here the problem is, one of the plastic holders on the motherboard is broken. But when I start with checking the other components, I found that my RAM was swapped. Before I have a 16 GB of RAM and now R8 only. The M2 SSD is Samsung 256GB. The disk is the same, I mean nothing missing here. The GPU is NVIDIA GTX 1660 Super. It's a bit dusty, but nothing broken. And the CPU, fortunately, is still the same. I'm the Ryzen 7 2600X. And as well, the power supply is still the same. So. I check all the components and everything is fine, except the motherboard. The motherboard is not working. Anyway, let's start and back this machine in function again. And first let's start with the motherboard. So I'm going to clean the motherboard because I will give this motherboard to a friend who has all the repair equipment and we will try to repair it. While cleaning on the motherboard, I didn't find any physical damage or any visibly burned components. I mean, some short circuit or anything similar. After I finished with the motherboard, I took the RAM, 8 gigs. I've tried to find and back my 16 gigs, but nothing from that. It is what it is. So this RAM is in a pretty good condition, almost like a new one. It's a little bright side here. After I clean and check the RAM, I place it back on the motherboard, because later I took the motherboard for repair. Now I move to cleaning the other components. The IMD cooling fan is still good and functional. Also these stock cooling fans are not bad at all. Actually these cooling fans are still pretty good. The heatsink, I wash it using soap and warm water, because to remove all the dust and dirt. The cooling fan, I mean the upper plastic part, I clean it using brushes, 96% isopropyl alcohol and soft napkins. This part I cannot wash it because here we have electronics. After the heatsink was dry, I assembled the cooling. And finally, the cooling is looking almost like a new one. The next is the power supply. I opened the power supply because to take a look from the inside and to clean it. The thing that I was worried is the light smell of the mold or moisture, which means the computer was placed somewhere where the humidity was higher. From the inside, except the dust, I found that the smell is coming from the cooling fan blades. And luckily, we have no problem with some circuits or capacitors. I mean, the power supply is still in a good shape. The power supply cover, the fan mesh and the plastic from the cooling fan, I wash it using soap and water. And after all, I can assemble the whole power supply. And the last thing about cleaning is the graphic card. Now, carefully start with disassembling. I mean, separating the cooling fan from the board. So the thermal paste is pretty dry, which is expected, 
And to clean the paste, I'm using brushes, cotton buds, 96% isopropyl alcohol, and plastic spudger stick. So something sharp or something metal is not recommended to be used here, because these electronics are pretty sensitive. As final, I re-clean the whole GPU from dust using brushes and isopropyl alcohol. The cooling fans, I clean it using brushes and isopropyl alcohol as well. I mean, I literally wash all the three fans. Now, the top plastics and the heatsink is a different story. The boat, I wash it using soap and water. I wash these parts because to make them fully clean and because later we will do some modifications. Now let's move to the PC case. So this is the case from this computer. And this is the case from my old computer. The both cases are very similar, almost the same. Just one has a power supply cover and the other one is open on the bottom. But before anything, let's do some modifications. So I'm gonna be short here because these modifications are pretty long, but this is what I've done here. First, I took out the front panel with all cables. Now, I remove this magnetic mesh from the top and the side panel. So, now I start with taking some measures and making some marks around. After I finish with measuring and marking, I took the dermal tool and I start with cutting. So first I cut the top side of the case and later I cut some parts from the front side. After the cutting, here also used sandpaper and chisel to make the cut smoother and less sharp. So I won't cut myself later. In the top corner, using drill, I make two holes and later I have done additional cuts. Well, now from the case I remove the PCI bracket covers and all other screws from the inside. Later, I wash the PC case and after the case was dry, I re-cleaned the whole case using 96% isopropyl alcohol. I have done all of this because we're going to paint the case and before painting, everything needs to be very clean. After I finish with cleaning, I move to taping. The PC case is going to be in two different colors, so I need to separate the painting. So first, I will use a white spray. Also, this is not a pure snow white spray. It's white spray, but not fully pure. It kind of has some shade of yellow, but a very, very tiny shade of yellow. And with this spray, I paint some parts of the PC case and I paint the front GPU plastic. After the spray paint gets dry, again, I have to re-clean the whole case because the spray causes dust fallout, which will cause problems with the next painting. After cleaning the whole case, again, I cross over one more taping. But now we're gonna use black spray. This is a deep black spray. It's a very specific and very unusual and very beautiful shade. Also, this is not a glossy paint. It's about 10 to 15% glossy, but the spray is more made. Also, to make the paint harder and with better quality, I bake the whole case in oven for about one hour and at a temperature of about 50 to 60 Celsius, or that's about 120 to 140 Fahrenheit. Meanwhile, I took the side panel. Here again, I have done some markings. Then for additional effect, I will use ripped or wavy cardboard. And again, I cross over one more taping and one more painting process. Anyway, we are not done yet. Now it's time to add more details. And for that, I will use Capton tape and thermal blanket. So, I want something similar that was used to build the Apollo lunar model. With Captain tape and a thermal blanket, 
I start with making some details to the PC case. The ribbed or the wavy cardboard I paint it in black and I place it on the side panel. So this reminds me of the outside of the Saturn V rocket. Actually this is not very accurate, but it's some mix that reminds of that. The thermal blanket also uses it to cover some parts of the PC case and make additional details and effects. Except on the case, I add a small part of a blanket to one side of the power supply, I mean on the visible side. I cannot warp the whole power supply because the power supply may burn. So all the time I need to be careful where they put the captain tape and the blanket. Also for this build I got some additional things like power and the restart button and a vertical GPU holder. So first let's start with the GPU holder. This holder is in a verge one, but not bad at all. Also, again, I have to make additional modifications on the case because to fit the GPU later, I mean, I have to cut a part of the PCI slots from the backside. Now the buttons. To the buttons, I soldered the wires that originally are from the PC case. And as well, I add some isolation tubes for any case. And now, to mount the both buttons on the case, I made a small plastic part with a metal look. The red button is the launch button and the other one is the reboot button. So some details that will fit into the story. And this is the case. Anyway, later I made a few more modifications. But for now, let's move to the other things. Now first, I move to assemble the GPU. As a thermal paste, I will use Thermal Grizzly. This is a very quality thermal paste and it's great for graphic cards, gaming laptops and everything similar. And this is not a paid promotion, just a personal experience. And I'm done with the graphic card. But now let's move to cooling. In this build, I'm going to use my old liquid cooling, but before that, I have to cross over one more cleaning. First, I remove the both cooling fans from the radiator. Now again, a container with a warm water, dish soap, and I wash the radiator only. The front head which is coming on the CPU cannot be washed, because here we have cables and electronics. Also, I have to clean these leftovers from stickers. Actually, I never like these factory stickers or stickers that retail stores are putting. After I dry up the radiator, I move to cleaning the rest of the cooling and the cooling fans. Also, I use the just the standard things as always, like soft napkins, brushes, isopropyl alcohol and compressed air. And this is the cooling after cleaning. So the model is a Game Store Capitan 240, it's a medium range cooling, but it's going to be great for this machine. Also here I have done one more modification. This is my Alienware M610 mouse, and this is standard version, but I more like the lunar version. 
So again, one more modification. Carefully, I disassemble the whole mouse and I remove anything that can be removed. I mean the electronics, the battery, the plastics, the buttons and everything else. Again, I cross over one more cleaning and taping process. And again, one more painting process. Modding this mouse was a little bit longer, because I removed some stuff that is not removable. So I have to stick all together and wait until all is dried up. Also I cannot bake this plastic, so I need to wait a little longer until the paint and the glue gets fully dried up. Anyway, after some work, finally I got something that I really like and something that will fit in this build. Meanwhile, I got the old motherboard back from the repair and the motherboard is successfully repaired. The problem was some small short circuit and the BIOS. But anyway, I've decided to do something different here. I got a new motherboard. And the new motherboard is Gigabyte Aurus Elite V2. So this is a little bit better motherboard than the old one. I mean with a better support, more ARM slots, more PCI Express slots and etc. So now I removed both plastic holders from the motherboard because we're going to use a liquid cooling and this is surplus. The liquid cooling has a different mount. It's easy to mount and not complicated at all. Now I will move the CPU from the old to the new motherboard. The cooling fan holders from the new motherboard, I place it on the old motherboard. So now anything is complete. I mean the both motherboard are complete and ready to use. Okay, now it's time to add a more hardware, like RAM and SSDs. And here we have Kingston Fury. 32 gigabytes in total. 32 gigs is an out for this machine. We have one 512 gigs M2 gigabyte SSD. This SSD will be for Windows and basic drivers and softwares. Now, first I will place the M2 SSD on the motherboard. Ok, everything looks fine here. And now let's place the RAM. The RAM looks good. And the motherboard is ready. Now I can place the motherboard in the case. The radiator will be on the front side of the case and the air will blow from the inside to the outside. I have done this because I will have less dust from the inside of the PC case.
and the computer is almost done. But now I move to making some additional modifications. I took the magnetic mesh that was on the top side and I cut the mesh into two parts. So one part is going to be on the top side to cover that part and the other is going to be on the bottom side. Also the mesh is easy removable and it's going to be easier to clean and maintain the PC from the inside. It took some time to organize the cable, but the final result was not so bad. These power supply cables are fixed. It's not modular. So perfect, I mean, ideal cable management is not really possible. But anyway, at the end is not bad at all. And as final detail, I add some Copton tape and thermal blanket to the top side of the case. And I add LEDs for an additional effect. And after making all these changes, this is the final result. And the whole computer is looking much different than before. And let's take a closer look. After everything was done, I moved to installing Windows, Windows drivers, also downloading game clients and downloading games, making some customization and etc. And finally, this machine is fully working. So basically this is a mid-range computer and still good for almost anything. It's good for gaming, it's good for doing some work, good for video editing and etc. Also, I will do another video where we're going to run more tests, see how this machine is performing and see how far it can go. And I'm very glad because I have done some remake to my old computer and now all is working well and looks unique and unusual. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope this video will give ideas and inspiration to back in function, mod or do something good with your touch or even with some other stuff. Also, if you like my work and if you want to support my channel, you can press the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.